Hello, high school basketball fans, and welcome to Van Wert High School, the home of the Cougars. It's the last regular season game between the Crestview Knights and the Van Wert Cougars. I'm Dave Bowen. Mark Bagley will be doing the color commentary for us this afternoon as this is a Saturday matinee. The Crestview Knights come in 19-2, 7-1, Northwest Conference runner-up. Van Wert 14-7 overall, 5-4 in the Western Buckeye League. A great opportunity for both teams, Mark, to tune up for tournament. What are your thoughts on today's contest? Yeah, Dave, it's, it's so fun. You know, all the battles we've had over the years as coaches, uh, as assistant coaches against each other, and there's been some great battles the last 13 years that I can remember. I don't go back in the 60s and 70s, but this is a great tournament preparation game for both Crestview and Van Wert, uh, a county rivalry for Crestview playing a bigger school uh, than they'll play in, in the Division Four tournament for Van Wert playing a 19-2 and two team that's been so consistent all year long with great balance, and I, I really see a, an outstanding ball game to, uh, today, Dave. Well, I hope that does play out, makes both teams better for the tournament trail. Let's take a quick look at the starters and then the keys. Uh, I'll go over the starters for Crestview. They're going to start Gavin Etzler. He's a 6'3 senior, averages 10 points a game. Mitch Temple, a 6'2 senior for Crestview, averages 9 points a game. Carson Hunter, the 6'3 senior, averages five points a game. Nate Lickley, the sharpshooter for outside for Crestview, 6'2 senior again, averages 10 points a game. And then Ren Sheets, the 6'6 sophomore, averages 11 points, leads the way in the scoring column for the Knights. He'll be inside, he's a sophomore. A great shooting team, balanced scoring for Crestview. What do you see for the keys for them, Mark, to to get a victory today over the Cougars. The first key for Crestview is Van Wert is super athletic, so they have to make great transition de defense, get back and build a wall. The second key is no dribble drive. Van Wert's gone to a dribble drive offense this year with their athletes, and they got to keep the ball out of the paint. The third one is limit uh, one of the top players in the Western Buckeye League, Aiden Pratt, his touches tonight. You're right, Aiden Pratt, you speak of him. He is an all-district eight selection as well. Van Wert comes in today's contest, as we said, 14 and seven, five and four. They average 58 points on offense. They give up 50 on defense. Their starters, Nate Phillips, the 6'3 senior, he averages six points per game. Luke Wessel, the 6'2 senior, he averages nine points a game. He's a glue guy for the Cougars. Carson Smith stands at 6'3". He's a senior, averaging nine points as well. One of the most improved players for this squad this year is Carson Smith. And then Garrett Gunner, Garrett Gunner, six foot senior, averages seven points per game. And then as you mentioned, Aiden Pratt, just the ultra competitor. It's been fun watching him closely from afar over in Nightland throughout his career. Just an outstanding young man, outstanding student athlete, a lot of success uh, as a Cougar in multiple sports. He's a 6'4 senior, averages 21 points per game. What are the keys for the Cougars to get a W today? For Van Wert, the first key is the quick turnaround. This is the 1.30 starting time. At, at basically, the JV was a high noon game. They didn't have much rest recovery from last night's game with Bath. Crestview had an extra night. They played Thursday night. Number two, they got to rebound the backside war. Uh, that, that's always important in this game, an, an emotional rivalry to get the backside rebound. And number three, it's going to be a tournament atmosphere here today, Dave. Van Wert's got to handle the highs and lows versus the rival. You're right. Tournament atmosphere. This game was originally scheduled the first weekend of the season, but due to Van Wert, Van Wert's success in football, we had to move it, moved it to the end. Um, we'll talk about the rivalry. I think the game at the beginning of the year when we restarted the series uh, has been a good thing, but we're, we're going to play it here, and I think that's going to be beneficial to both squads. I agree, Dave. I think this is perfect for both teams. Uh, their schedule at the end of the year, that they had some blowout wins, both teams did. This is going to be one of those games tonight that's going to be close, back and forth, a game of runs, just like a tournament game. High school basketball fans, it's Mark Bagley, it's Dave Bowen, it's Van Wert Cougars, it's Crestview Knights. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN.
Welcome back to Van Wert High School. The Crestview Knights, the Van Wert Cougars. End the season finale. 19-2, Crestview. 14-7, Van Wert. Tournament tune-up, our officiating crew, Randy Prince, Chris Ewald, and Curtis Bigelow. And our scoreboard is presented by Lodix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler, jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them in Coldwater or Van Wert or online at Lodix.com. Here we go, Mark. And both teams are in their, looks like, brand-new uniform. <laughs> it's, yeah. And the Crestview Knights have come out in a box and one on Aiden Pratt. Right away, Carson Hunter, number 10, is going to guard Pratt. Phillips with the ball out front. And Dave, as we see this early on, this could be something that, that Coach Etzler does in the tournament, too, against a variety of teams that's in that unbelievable district at Elida. You're right. And as we said, this is a nice tune-up, and that's something that Crestview will look at. A turnover there on the Cougars. Nate Lickley with the ball. Goes to Mitch Temple on the left side. Brings it out front. Van Wert in their patented man-to-man -man defense. And, Dave, I think live ball turnovers will be key tonight. That did not affect Van Wert there because it was in the lane. But live ball turnovers, especially against Crestview, could be deadly. Nate Lickley on the right wing. Gets a flare screen. Finds himself open. Nate Lickley shoots 51% from behind the arc. Makes good on that first shot of the game. Crestview up 3-0. And Van Wert didn't chase the flare screen. It was a great screen there by Crestview. And Lickley is going to hit it every single time when he gets his feet set. And returning the favor, number 10 for the Cougars, Garrett Gunner. And that's one of the keys for Van Wert. Uh, Garrett hasn't shot the ball overall great this year, but he's got to shoot that shot when people dare him to, and he just did that right there and made it. And you're right, the boxing one is daring some of the other perimeter players for Van Wert, and Garrett Gunner makes do on that shot. Lickley with the ball, puts it out to Hunter up front. Another flare screen from Sheets. Lickley from the corner. Not good there. Rebound by Phillips. Here comes Nate bringing the ball across the timeline. Over to Gunner on the right wing. I like how Van Wert has their head up. Going to penetrate the gaps. Does Phillips right there. Down to the left corner. Another three ball. It's good for Carson Smith. When you put the ball in the basket, that's going to take the defense out of any junk defense they might be in as Crestview is in the box and one right now. Two shots, two buckets for the Cougars. And you said it, Dave. How do you beat a box in one? Number one, the guy being boxed, Aiden Pratt, has to be a good screener. But number two, your shooters that are open have to make shots. And when you make them early, that just makes you that much more comfortable. Lickley off the screen from Etzler, gets the pass from Temple, hits the two-pointer in the in the paint. And they're... Van Wert's trying to chase Lickley, but they're behind him. And you can't chase Lickley when he moves that well without the ball. Those are easy shots for him. Did a nice job on the curl cut. Shot there by Gunter. And then an offensive rebound. Van Wert maintains again. Two offensive rebounds on the possession. And against a nice Cougar squad, you can't give them multiple looks. Carson Smith with the two-point basket. And that's three early offensive rebounds for Van Wert. That's going to be a key tonight. Carson Hunter gets in the paint, and he drops one in there. Gets the friendly roll off the metal. And Hunter picks up his first field goal of the game. And Dave Crestview has seen something in the scouting report. Van Wert, the screener, is not helping, and they're curling those screens, and so he, he's got a wide-open uh, shot to the basket. It's happened three times already early in this game. That's a great observation, Mark. You're correct. Crestview has curled into the paint. Lickley picks up the personal right there. That's his first, team's first. Van Wert under out of bounds. Nice play. Unable to come up with the bucket is Luke Wessel. Crestview in transition. Temple with the shot from the left side. No good. Rebound goes to Carson Smith. Here come the Cougars. And that last possession by Van Wert was a huge play by Sheets. Got his hand on it. Turnover. Crestview attacking the basket. That's Gavin Etzler. Takes the contact. No call. Mitch Temple with the rebound. A lot of bodies. Goes up strong. Doesn't connect. Nate Phillips comes out of there. Van Wert in transition. Phillips into the paint. Jump stops. Ball's hacked away. Here comes Temple behind the back to Etzler. He's going to go to the rim. Nice block by Phillips, but he steps on the end line. It's going to be Crestview basketball. It's physical early on. Tournament time action. That's what you're going to see when you play that opponent on a neutral floor. 
Lots of things happened there, Dave, and nothing happened all at the same time. <laughs> uh, but that's four turnovers for Van Wert, and, and all four of those turns have been live ball turnovers. Crestview running their under out of bounds set. Hunter to Etzler on the left wing. Lickley out front. Swings it over to T T uh, T uh, Mitch Temple on the right side. And they're in pure motion right now, Crestview is. Hunter from 13, high off the glass, no good. Aiden Pratt with his first touch of the game on the defensive board. Here comes Van Wert. And it's 7-1 rebounding right now for Van Wert. Uh, There's Aiden Pratt on the offensive rebound with the missed shot by Carson Smith. Give Pratt the two-point field goal, his first bucket of the game. Here comes Crestview, your score. On the Lodic scoreboard, Van Wert 10, Crestview 7. There's that hard curl by Lickley again. They're really, that's a scouting report defense right there, That, that uh, uh, offense for Crestview. Yeah, Van something Wert. that the coaching staff has picked up on film. Here comes Lickley on the left baseline. Nice stop and pop jumper for Nate Lickley. That is his sixth and seventh point of the quarter. And he's put the ball on the, on the, on the uh, deck a little bit, Dave, and that's... That's not really the scouting report. He's done a good job coming off those screens. Great observation. He is a three-point shooter. Pratt with the left baseline jumper. No good. Carson Hunter with the rebound. Here come the Knights. And one of the things we're starting to see here, Dave, is both teams are rushing some shots, I think, both ways. And that's part of feeling each other out in a, in a very much a rivalry intense game. Absolutely. Wessel picks up the personal. That's his first team's first. Substitutions in the game for both squads. Connor Sheets coming in for Crestview. He's going to come in for Ren Sheets. No relation between those two young men. Jarrett Harding also in for Crestview. Did you pick up who came in for the Cougars? Yeah, we, we've got uh, Connor Schaefer and, and both Aiden Pratt are in too right now. So both teams have gone into their bench seven players uh, early on. And I believe we're going to have a moving screen called on Crestview. I think that's going to be on Connor Sheets. It is. Connor picks up his first personal, team second. And I think what happened there, Dave, Van Wert switched on the down screen, and I think he, he hooked him on, on the post up, and that's what they called there. And I think Coach Zetzer right now is talking to Randy Prince, a veteran official, about what happened. Mm -hmm. So Aiden Pratt with the basketball, going to bring it across the timeline, guarded by Jarrett Harding. And, and now Harding's in the box and one. There, there's a screen that, that you have to do against the box and one. Either the player screens or goes at it. Turnover on the deflection. Here come the Knights. The light ball turnover that you spoke of. Mitch Temple's going to draw contact and the foul. believe that's going to be on Luke Wessel, number four. Nope. Caden Schaefer, his first, team second. And when, when you're playing a box of one and the, the offense telegraphs a pass, that's what happens right there. That's, that's what, you know, that scenario. Mitch Temple shoots the free throw. He is a 72% free throw shooter for the Knights. Misses that one. Since we have the free throw, I'm going to throw that first question at you, Mark. What was the first season that Van Wert and Crestview played each other? Well, I'm, I'm, you think about it. I'm not. I'm not going to know this thing. <laughs> I'm going to guess. I was alive. I don't think you were. I, I'm going to say 1965. You are really, really close. 67-68. It was a Crestview victory. 79 to 61. 67-68. First season. These two nearby schools, seven miles apart from high school to high school, first played each other in basketball. With the shot on the right wing, A.J. Prophet comes up empty. Here come the Knights. Mitch Temple across the timeline to the free throw line. Jared Harding, he has a really pretty 15-footer. Wanted to get it off there, but we got an offensive foul. And I think it's off the ball called by Chris Ewald. It's going to be on Mitch Temple, I believe. That's Temple's first, team's third. And I, I didn't see that, Dave. And, and right now, Coach Esther is not very happy with it, with the officiating here. And, and that's, again, part of the emotional part of the game that happens. And uh, it, both teams are being physical. And right now, and Aiden's got his hands full with, with Harding in the post. Nate Phillips wide open. And again, destroys the box and one with the three ball. And we have another foul, I believe, called here. 
in the first quarter. It's going to be on number three for Van Wert. That's A.J. Profit, his first, team's third. And that, that's what has to happen right now. It's getting very emotional, and, and the referees are going to clean up all the hand grabbing right now. And what we've seen, Dave, in the first quarter, three different players that are open have hit threes for Van Wert. Nicely done because they may see this type of defense in tournament. We've got Phillips now chasing Lickley. Carson Hunter with the basketball throws the back cut to Lickley who kicks it over to Connor Sheets. The hoop and the harm as Sheets scores the basket. And I believe that foul is on Aiden Pratt. That's going to be his first, team's fourth. Again, give Connor Sheets the basket, his first of the game. He's going to go to the free throw line where he is um, a 60% free throw shooter. Sheets does not connect, but Lickley is able to reel in the offensive rebound. Crestview maintains possession. Gavin Etzler wide open on the right wing. You give him that tight kind of time, he usually connects as he shoots 51% from behind the arc, but not there. Hits the rim, goes over the backboard. Ball's going to go to the Cougars. And that's one of the differences here in the first quarter. Crestview's one of five, Dave, from three, and, and they've had some open looks too. And, and so it's really been a back and forth, 13-12 uh, to 12 Van Wert lead here. It's, there's been a lot of action and not a lot of points, and, and we expected this game to be in the 40s or 50s. Uh-huh. The Lottex Jewelry scoreboard, 13-12. Cougars with the lead, showing good patience on offense with Aiden Pratt in the box and one. Shot on the right wing by A.J. Profit. Doesn't connect, and... The ball deflected out of bounds. It's going to be Crestview basketball. And you notice that possession there, Dave. Van Wert went to Aiden Pratt as exclusive screener because then it makes Crestview have to talk and decide how they're going to play that. When, and they got an open look again from three, and, and that's going to be the storyline, you know, as long as Crestview stays in that box and one. And I like what you're talking about, Aiden Pratt being a screener. That's what you want your guy that's being boxed. Try and create confusion within the defense because – the defense doesn't typically play that type of defense. Gavin Etzler right there stops and pops from 12 feet, hits the shot at the end of the quarter, and your first quarter score, Van Wert, 13, Crestview takes the lead on that Gavin Etzler two with 14 points. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. We enjoy your watching high school basketball on WOSN. There's no admission fee to watch a game, but there is a cost to TV44 to broadcast it for you. So thank you to viewer-supported TV44 by sending them a financial gift right now. Crestview with the basketball here at the beginning of the second quarter. Temple with the ball in the right block. Spins, kicks it out. Nice deflection and steal by number five. Carson Smith goes coast to coast and misses. Offensive rebound, not good. Smith comes back in from out of bounds. He's got the ball on the right side. Going to set things up for Van Wert. Get it back out to Garrett Gunner. He's got the basketball. Kicks it to the left wing and then back out top. Two more offensive rebounds there for Van Wert, and that's been a really big factor. Ball was shot there by A.J. Profit. Another offensive rebound, Mark. That's four on this particular possession, that's, isn't it? That's seven for the game, too. And it that's when you can't defend that long against a good team. Almost goes out of bounds. Phillips with the basketball up top. And again, Crestview's in a defense they typically don't play. They usually are playing man-to-man. -man. You have... Your rebounding uh, fundamentals in your man-to-man, -man, you know who you're checking out in this box. you got to find a body and check him out. They're not doing that very well right well, now. And when Jared Hart is playing him, he's on the top side, so you can't box very easily. You have to really get low to box. Great point. Ball kick to the left wing. Shot by Carson Smith. Doesn't go. Ren Sheets with the rebound. Mitchell, Mitch Temple with the basketball. Here come the Knights. And all the shots right now for Van Wert are threes, and they're, 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 getting, they're getting cold from three. They've only shot at a 30% clip this year, Dave. And there's Gavin Etzler going hard to his left, kissing it off the window. Two points for Etzler here, the first points of the second quarter. Crestview is now 6 of 9 from 2, Dave, and they're all on curls. 
that they've really scouted Van Wert well. Yeah, great observation on your part, Mark. And there's hard penetration, and number 10, Garrett Gunner, the hoop and the harm, gets into the paint, draws the foul on Crestview. And that's really important for Garrett. He's the leader of this team as a point guard for three years. He's got to do all the little things, and he's scoring the night for him. But he only averaged about seven a game, and he's already got himself five here early on for Van Wert. And, you know, the chess match continues. It sure does. The free throw goes up, and it is good for Carson Smith. So give him the three-point play the old-fashioned way. And we're all knotted up here. On the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. Ball up top to Carson Hunter. Looks inside. Crestview going inside for the first time, really, in the set offense. Going to draw the personal foul. Wrenchitz guarded by Luke Wessel right there. And I think Aiden, Aiden uh, Pratt got about a 10-second break. <laughs> and now Wessel's got two, so he's got to come out. Um, so he didn't get much of a break there. I think they wanted to give him a couple minutes, and he got a couple seconds. Crestview inbounds the ball. Nate Lickley on the right wing. And we're going to have the foul called. Uh, I think the reaction by Lickley caused the foul to be called as much as anything. But Carson Smith caught him up the side of the head by accident. That's his first personal, team six. So we're one away from the bonus here with almost six minutes left to go in the half day. That's a big factor here. It is. Crestview is a good free throw shooting team. Nice play by Aiden Pratt to step over the top and get that steal over Sheets without fouling. Here come the Cougars. Phillips with the ball on the left side, brings it back out. Kicks it over to Smith to number three, A.J. Prophet. He's wide open against the box, and he nails it. Three-point field goal, A.J. Prophet, his first points of the ball game. And Van Wert is now 4 of 10, which is respectable from three. And if you shoot that well consistently, you... You're going to, again, shoot him out of it. Lickley with the three for Crestview off the backboard. No good. Pratt with the rebound. Here he comes. Deals to the right wing. Wide open look at the basket. Carson Smith picks up another field goal. He's got five in the quarter. Nice pass by Pratt. He just let that develop. And that was the key for Crestview to make transition. They didn't do it. Um, and they were going to lay up. Personal foul is going to be on Garrett Gunner. I have that down as his first, but that is going to put Crestview in the bonus, as you mentioned, seventh team foul for the Cougars. And as we approach this midway point of the second quarter, Dave, Crestview is subbing freely. Van Wert's going to play seven. Crestview's played eight so far, may play ten. That's going to be a factor in this game, an early start. Van Wert played last night. That could be a, a, a key factor. Yeah, you got to balance that playing a lot of players versus continuity, but Crestview has done that all year long. Ike Klein just comes out of the game. He comes in off the bench. Kellen Putman at the table to come in for Carson Hunter, who nails that first free throw. Second one is up. No good. And here come the Cougars. Pratt with the ball in the left wing. Looks to attack. Comes up short. Sheets may have gotten a piece of it. Carson Smith wide open on the left side. No good, but there's Aiden Pratt. Another offensive rebound. Doesn't go down. Crestview able to get the rebound off the Pratt miss. Here comes Gavin Etzler over to Carson Hunter. There's your curl cut. But we're going to call a foul as Gavin Etzler sets the screen. But Carson Smith goes right through it. That's going to be Carson Smith's second personal foul. Team number eight, Gavin Etzler, going to go to the free throw line where he is a 74% free throw shooter. And that, that's a frustration foul by Smith there. He ran right through him. And the rule is against someone that moves so well like Nate, Nate Lickley is you got to get thin to get through. And he got wide and just plowed him over. And that was an easy call. And, and so now he's got two. And so Van Wert's got two starters with two fouls. Etzler makes the first one. Next question with this rivalry, this series between the Knights and the Cougars. How many years did the two programs play each other before taking a hiatus? And what was the series record first time around? So I'm going to guess 15 years against each other. I'm going to guess eight wins for Crestview and seven for Van Wert. Going 15 years, eight and seven. Let's come back to that after this possession. Again, Van Wert very patient, working the ball against the box and one, and Nate Lickley is going to be called for being very physical with Aiden Pratt. 
And the Cougar fans acknowledging that off the ball foul on Lickley. And again, they're trying to clean up the hand-to-hand -hand combat right now. <laughs> and that's what both teams are doing. And they did, they're trying to get an advantage because they know both teams are really skilled offensively to get that advantage. Van Wert with the under out of bounds play. The lob to Pratt. He makes do on it. Give Aiden his second field goal of the game. Four points thus far. Crestview with the basketball. That's Putman with it on the right side. Dave, your experience of coaching against Van Wert, what's that play called? I, I, about, you, I don't know. That play yeah. for 25 years. I almost went there, but it's called Rocket. Rocket. Okay. Yeah, the lob play. I'm like, I've seen that over and over, and you know what's going to happen, but it's like the bun. If you execute it, you, there's not much you can do about it, and the Cougars did so right there. There's another curl. Jared off the window, the kiss off the glass. Give Jared Harding his first field goal of the game. 7 of 10 from 2, and they're all on curls. That makes your score Van Wert 23, Crestview 21 on the Lottix Jewelry scoreboard. There's a turnover off the penetration. Turnover on Gunner. Here come the Knights. Gavin Etzler down the floor to Ren Sheets. Going to spin to the 10. Nice help side recovery by Aiden Pratt with the block. Cougars in transition. Phillips kicks it back out to Gunner. That was a great move inside uh, by Sheets and then a better block by Pratt. Just an outstanding athletic play by both guys. Yeah, Sheets got by profit, but then there was Pratt to clean up the shot with the block and maintain possession. And Nicely G done. And Jared Hardy has done a great job on Pratt inside. He's been physical, he's, he's moved, and right now, Pratt's standing, and that, that's what can not happen. Shot from the corner, there's another one, the second three for A.J. Prophet in this game. Wide open, making do on it. And he's a really good standstill shooter, and he was wide open, and now Van Wert is five for 11 from three. You'll take that percentage any day from behind there, the arc. Nicely done by the Cougars. Lickley with the ball. Going to have a kick against the Cougars. The series, the first time around, the Knights and the Cougars played 10 years. 5-5 five, five split. 5-5 five, right. five split. Now, if you talk to certain Crestview folk and certain Van Wert folk, they'll say, we quit playing each other because we were beating the other team too much. No, yeah. it was 5-5. Five, five. It was dead even Steven. And I have the last when it resumed, and, and I think that's going to play out pretty. Tonight could could make it uh, similar again. Yeah. We'll, I've got more questions there, so don't, uh, don't sure. spill the beans. Gavin Etzler from behind the arc. He scores it. Chris Ewald's going to wave it off, and he's going to call a foul on Nate Phillips. I believe it's on Phillips going through the screen. He's going to say the foul occurred before Etzler let go of the basketball. So that's going to take away the three, and it's going to put Carson Hunter at the free throw line and another foul on Phillips. Well, actually, that's his first, team's ninth. And this is, the, uh, I believe, the seventh and eighth free throw for Crestview in the first half, a very physical first half, Dave. They need to make do on the line, and we're going to switch. We're going to take Hunter off the line. I actually thought Hunter was setting the screen, but obviously he was not. Jarrett Harding is going to go to the free throw line to shoot one in the bonus. First one's up for Harding. In and out. Rebound to Phillips. And that's a big play there. It took three off the board and missed the free throw. and so an empty trip for Crestview. Yeah, and let's see what the Cougars do right here. Momentum on their side. Phillips with the look against the box. He drills it. These Cougar basketball players, they see what's happening to their teammate in Aiden Pratt, and they're saying, we're going to step up, and they are doing so, shooting 50% now behind the arc. Oh, Is that the 6 for 12? Uh, 6 for 12 right now, and, and I think that we'll probably see some changes at half by both teams because the Crestview are is killing Van Wert on the curls. There's another curl. You've identified it from the get-go. Gavin Etzler makes the two, and here comes penetration down the lane. Garrett Gunner is going to pick up a foul on Crestview's Ren Sheets, I believe. And that was a really good play by Gunner there. The defender was sideways, and he drove the ball right into his chest. And that's what you have to do to get to the free throw line. So Derek Gunner goes to the free throw line. Missed that first one, I believe. He did. Okay, thank you. He's looking in the scorebook. The second one is up, and nothing but the bottom of the net. So one for two for Garrett Gunner, 
Here comes Crestview down 30 to 23 on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. A big last minute for both teams, Dave. I think Crestview wants to get that margin of five or less, and Van wants to extend to nine or more. Hunter enters the ball into Sheets, unable to do anything with it. Kicks it out to Etzler, up, doesn't go. Jared Harding attacks the basketball and creates a little bit of havoc, and the ball goes off the Cougars. It'll be Crestview under out of bounds. And that's one of seven, Dave, for Crestview. They're a really good shooting team. This gym provides a different kind of background. That could be some of that here in the first half. And that's one thing we haven't talked about. Crestview likes playing here at this point in the season because this is where they'll be playing next week in tournament. Huge advantage for Crestview. Carson Hunter with the three. No good. Harding with the offensive rebound takes it back to the rim and scores it. Jared Harding, one of the most improved basketball players this season for Crestview, comes off the bench, gives them a lift. That's his second field goal of the game. And he's played most of this half, Dave, and has done an outstanding job defensively, and now he's contributing offense with offensive rebounds and buckets as well. The Cougars going to settle for the last shot of the quarter with 12 seconds remaining. Get into their set. Phillips with the ball on the right wing. Curl around the screen for Pratt. Finds his open teammate inside out action. Did he get it off? He did not. Garrett Gunner attacked the rim, but that's not going to count. So on your Lodix Jewelry scoreboard, your halftime score, Van Wert 30, Crestview 25. we got a good old good one. You're watching High School Basketball with Dave Bowen and Mark Bagley on WOSN. Welcome back to Van Wert High School. We've got ourselves a dandy with the Cougars leading 30 to 25 over Crestview on the Lodix Jewelry Scoreboard. Are you out of town or can't get WOSN? WOSN is now streaming our broadcast channel 24-7 online on Roku and Apple TV. Download our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. Uh, $100 allows you to watch anywhere in the world. Visit app.wsn.tv to sign up. Mark, it's been a great first half. You got some stats there and some thoughts? Let's hear them. Yeah, first of all, for the visiting Crestview Knights, uh, they are 9 of 13 from 2, mostly on those curl cuts, 69%. Only one of eight, a really good shooting team that hit that first three by Nate Lickley and haven't hit one since, 13%. But overall, uh, 10 of 21 for 48%. Four of seven, 57% for their 25 points. For Van Wert, five of 13, 39% from two. Six of 12 in that box in one day, 50%. Overall, 11 of 25, 44%. Two of three for their 30 points. Van Wert has dominated the glass. 17 rebounds, nine offensive. Crestview has eight. Van Wert has six turnovers. Crestview four. It's going to be a great second half, Dave. And right away we see Crestview going straight man-to-man -man now. Uh, no box. Let's see how that affects the three-point shooting for the Cougars. And right away, Nate Lickley takes an offensive charge. That's something he has done consistently throughout his career. Takes the... The charge on Garrett Gunner, who was penetrating, that's his second personal team first. And a great play there by Nate to step in and take one for his team. Uh, for Garrett, a learning lesson to jump stop and make that pass, and, and that call doesn't happen. And that, that's just a, a little play there that, that, that would, have, would have created an open three for his teammate. So Crestview with the basketball. Carson Hunter out front. Straight man-to-man -man by the Cougars again. Goes inside to Ren Sheets early. He's going to work against Pratt. Goes to the right and gets the shot over Pratt. Ren Sheets, who only had two points in the first quarter, he's the leading scorer for the Knights at 11, picks up his second field goal. Pratt attacks Sheets at the other end, gets the miss, or has it deflected, gets the miss, and gets the hoop in the harm as Aiden Pratt offensively rebounds his own shot. The personal foul goes against Crestview's Mitch Temple, I believe. And both big men went at each other, Dave. Great move on one end by Sheets, and then right back, offense rebound number 10 for Pratt, and, the, and one with the free throw. That, that foul was actually on Crestview's Ren Sheets. So the hoop and the harm, the three-point play for Pratt. Here comes Crestview with the basketball. Lickley in the corner, up fakes the defender, takes the shot, misses. 
Rebound by Van Wert. Garrett Gunner brings it down the floor. He attacks, kicks it to the right wing. Nice jump stop there. Again, Sheets deflects it, but it goes to Pratt. And give was, give him another look, field goal. Look what I found, Dave. There was a lucky <laughs> play by Van Wert. And, uh, Luck is when preparation and an opportunity meet, and Aiden Pratt takes advantage of that opportunity. Carson Hunter at the free throw line. Nice touch there for Hunter. Give him the field goal. So both teams come out scoring. Pratt with five. Crestview, two from Hunter, two from Sheets. And the chess mask continues, and, and again, they're going back to man-to-man, -to -man, and right away, Pratt scores five. So there's a reason, you know, Van Wert shot him out of it, but Pratt is a really good scorer, too. It's a pick-your-poison kind of defensive philosophy for Crestview right now. Ball on the ground, a 50-50 ball. Phillips maintains it and picks up the personal foul. That's going to go against Carson Hunter. That'll be his second, team second. There were probably about four fouls there, two in each team, and the last one was called, Dave. That, and that's what this game provides. There's just a lot of 50-50 balls that, that produce uh, high-intensity plays. They're trying to run a post up there for Pratt, but Van Wert cannot get that ball into the high post. So Garrett Gunner with the ball out top. Doing there it that, is. That, yeah. Is that blazer? Is that what? Is no, that, that, that's okay. called jacket. Yeah, jacket. Yeah, that, that was jacket right there. Again, and we emulate each other, these two programs. If one school does a, that set particularly well, the other school's going to steal it, not only because it works, but it also helps for scouting purposes when you play the opposing team. Nice inbound play by the Cougars. And there's going to be a foul over the back as Carson Smith took the shot, missed it, then goes over Etzler's back. And that's three on, on Smith. That's a big loss for Van Wert. In frustration of missing the shot. Now he's got to sit for a while here, and, and Van Wert goes into their bench now. And we know that A.J. Prophet played a great first half, but it's different now. There's no box in one, so he's going to have to do some different things uh, both offensively and defensively. 35-29 lead for the Cougars on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. Crestview in their half set. Half court set, Mitchell Temple with the ball, kicks it over to Lickley. Looks to attack as Mitch Temple takes the shot at the elbow. Another nice roll on the rim. Back to back, nice rolls for Hunter and now Mitchell Temple as he picks up his first field goal of the game, third, second and third point. Van Wert attacks, Pratt has it blocked by Sheets. Transition to Lickley, no dribble. Off the window, give Lickley the bucket give Carson Hunter the assist. We're going back and forth now. Another steal. Hunter gets the bucket off of the Lickley assist. And Crestview sped Van Wert up there, and they've created two layup turnovers. A great block there by Sheets on Pratt, and we're all knotted up. A lot of action out there on the floor, and you're, you're right. That's a six-point swing real quick for Crestview. 35-35, here come the Cougars. Penetration by Gunner, gets it in there and goes off the window, does Garrett Gunner. He picks up his eighth and ninth point of the game. That was a great fake there by Gunner. They created a little separation to get it off the glass then. Crestview in their half court set. Temple with the ball, looking in, gets it into Sheets, going against Pratt. Squares up on him, kicks it out to Etzler, back to Temple on the right wing. Spin, off the window, doesn't go. Here comes Pratt, looks to outlet it, but Crestview gets a deflection and a steal. Carson Hunter over to Mitch Temple, looking to penetrate, knows he's got Pratt in the, in the area, misses it. Pratt gets the rebound, here come the Cougars. Pratt with the ball at the free throw line. Looks like he's gonna go all the way, but Sheets blocks it from behind, but it goes right to number four, Luke Wessel, and he goes up strong and draws contact. Luke Wessel going to go to the free throw line. The foul is going to be on Nate Lickley. That's his third. So Lickley in a little bit of foul trouble for Crestview. Luke Wessel at the line shooting to the Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line. Lee's Famous Recipe chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe chicken home style happens here. Dave, there's a lot of talking there, and there was not much that happened again for the last minute as back and forth and play after play, and um, it's just really the game of runs right now. That's what we th that said would happen in this game, an emotional game and a game of runs. And now Van Wert's on a 4-0 run. Wessel gets the first of two, misses the second, the left-hander. Here comes Crestview off of Harding's leg, but he recovers it. Going to go off the window, and that is the patented Jared Harding 10 to 12 foot jumper off the window, and that 
takes us to the score of 38-37 Van Wert on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. And that play, Van Wert had one earlier, Dave, where it, look what I found, and then Crestview just had the same thing happen right there where it kind of bounced right into his hands and, and made the tough layup. And those are big plays. When you get the bounce, you got to score it. Crestview does there. Pratt with the ball inside going to work against Sheets. The lanky Sheets giving Pratt some trouble inside. And we're going to have a foul called. Coach Lada really thought the ball went out of bounds on Crestview. Well, they're going to talk about it, and they're going to get it right. I like that piece of officiating between Curtis Bigelow and Chris Ewald. Ben Lada helped out a little bit. And that's great officiating when they get together and help. And, and both coaching staffs have really helped the officials out tonight on, on certain calls. But uh, right now, Sheets' size has really affected Pratt inside. Now they brought brought in another sub to guard him because, because the game is such fast tempo. Sheets needs a blow right now. Aiden Pratt with the ball. Nasir Easterling gets a hand on it. Gavin Etzler had it. It's lost. It's loose. This 50-50 ball goes to the Cougars. I'm not sure that that's two turnovers or none, Dave. <laughs> well, what happens, though, is Garrett Gunner attacks the rim, and on the left side lays it in with the right hand. Give Garrett Gunner the field goal. That's his second of the third quarter. He's got 11 for the game, Dave, and that's huge. Average of seven a game. He's been really aggressive tonight. And you mentioned early in the game Garrett Gunner would we'll have opportunities today, and he has had in some previous games here in the recent past. Maybe not taking advantage of those opportunities is doing so today. He's really been a good floor general here in the third quarter, especially when Crest made that run. He kind of settled things down here a little bit, and we see Carson Smith at the scores table. They're going to roll the dice and play him with three. Garrett Gunner with the ball kicks it to the right side. A.J. Prophet back in the game. He has two threes from the first half. There's a kick to the left side. Not good for Garrett Gunner. Crestview with the basketball. Mitchell Temple brings it across the timeline. Carson Hunter to the right wing. Kicks it out. Temple will get things set up. And both teams are a little sped up right now. And, and whoever has the most poised day the last 10 minutes is probably going to win this game. Lickley with the look from three. No good. Came off the curl instead of attacking the rim. Goes behind the arc. Comes up short with the shot. The ball goes out of bounds, so it'll be Van Wert Cougar basketball. And he hit that first one in a struggle for the line a little bit right now. And again, poise is going to be important. And, and Crestview's trying to create tempo because they're subbing so much, uh, Dave. They, uh, they played now, I think, 10 guys in this game. So now they're going full court man-to-man -to, -man to try to get Van Wert um, Tired. Uh, yeah, and if you're going to play 10 guys, you do want to extend defensively. You just can't give anything up. Pratt with the ball against Nasir Easterling. Goes to the right side. Here's Phillips with the basketball. And Easterling's played very physical on Pratt here in limited minutes here in the third quarter. Lots of deflections and tips by Crestview. Nice look there from the left wing. Doesn't go for Carson Smith. Temple with the rebound. Harding with the basketball. He brings it across the timeline. Isaac Klein, or I'm sorry, that's Kellen Putman with the shot. Doesn't go. Rebound to Garrett Gunner. Cougars in transition. Coast to coast for Garrett Gunner. Another bucket for him. He's having an outstanding basketball game. And I think this pace right now favors Van Wert. I know Crest is playing a lot of guys, but it favors Van Wert. They're able to get to the rim and transition. Crestview's half-court defense has been pretty solid. Temple with the shot. Doesn't go there. And we've got a foul, and it's going to be against Crestview. I think that was on Easterling for holding Pratt, I believe. Nasir Easterly picks up his first foul, as you are correct, team's fourth. And that was a big momentum shift there. When Sheets went out, he had blocked Pratt's shot twice in a row, and he sat for a few minutes, and we're right back where we started, Dave, at five points. Exactly. Crestview tied things up at 35, but they've scored one field goal since then, and the Cougars have extended the lead to 42, a five-point lead. Here we go. Pratt with the ball on the right side, gives it to Phillips, brings it across, looking for the back door. Never seen that before from the Cougar uh, contingent. And Crest, who played that perfectly. <laughs> yeah. And there's a nice play again by who else but Garrett Gunner. The hoop and the harm picks up the field goal. And we've spoke about this a lot, Dave. For Van Wert to make a tournament run, the point guard has to play well. And this point guard this year for Van Wert is Garrett Gunner, as he has the last three years. And he is a crucial part of this run right now. 
And Crestview is going to take a Lee's Famous Recipe timeout. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Homestyle happens here. Dave Bowen, Mark Bagley, WOSN Basketball. We'll be right back after these. We're back here at Van Wert High School, the home of the Cougars, Crestview, Van Wert, rivalry, regular season finale, Mark Bagley, Dave Bowen, and Garrett Gunner going to the free throw line, Mark, and he has had an outstanding third quarter. He really has. This whole floor game has been really good tonight. He's traded for himself and others, and really been aggressive against Crestview's man-to-man -man defense here in the third quarter. Gunner with the free throw, picks up the free throw and his ninth point of the quarter. Crestview tied the game at 35. 40 seconds left on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. See if Crestview wants to hold for one or run their offense. A nice deflection by Caden Schaefer. And Crest, that, go ahead. That's what, sorry, Dave. We're used to doing color, aren't we? <laughs> well, we both are. But that's yep. what Schaefer brings to Van Wert. Hustle, effort. He's not very big, but he plays hard every possession. And, and he's in there to finish this third quarter to give Smith a chance not to get his fourth foul, and, and this is a really important possession for Crestview because essentially two timeouts here, one here and the one at the end of the quarter. Yeah, the t timeout taken by Crestview. Doug got sort of ball inside the sheets, attacks the basket, but Pratt plays good wall-up defense. Van Wert with the defensive rebound. Here comes Garrett Gunner. 12 seconds remaining in the quarter. Coach Lodick yells out the set. Here they go. Phillips with the ball at the elbow. Give it to Wessel. Wessel down to Schaefer. Not who you're looking to probably have score there, but he does. Caden Schaefer with the three-pointer at the end of the third quarter. The Cougars, Crestview comes back, but the Cougars answer and lead 48 to 37 at the end of three on the Lodix Jewelry Scoreboard. You're watching exciting high school basketball on WOSN. We're back for fourth quarter action. It's going to be Crestview basketball, and it is imperative that they get on the scoreboard early. Down 11 on the three-pointer by super sub Caden Schaefer today. Gavin Etzler with the shot. Doesn't connect. Here come the Cougars. I just mentioned about his hustle and effort, but that was great execution by Van Wert in a set play at the end of the quarter. There goes Garrett Gunner again. Misses. Ren Sheets with the rebound. Temple. Gets it to Gavin Etzler, over to Nate Lickley, wide open. That's when he usually drills it. Doesn't come away with a bucket there. Loose ball. We got a foul called. And we'll get the players separated on that loose ball, but a foul called right away by Randy Prince, and that is going to be on Garrett Gunter. And that's one of those plays, Dave, where great look again by Lichty and then just a war on the backside. We said that was the key tonight, and that was a war rebound, and Crestview won that war. Garrett Gunner picks up the personal, his third, team's third. Crestview under, out of bounds. Sheets at the elbow, over to Temple. And Gavin Etzler has the ball out front. Here we go. Temple looking to penetrate. Stops, pops, kicks it back out to Hunter. Goes into Ren Sheets, does the ball. He goes against Aiden Pratt and scores. Scores. Ren Sheets picks up his fifth and sixth point of the basketball game. That's where Crestview needs to get the basketball here early and often in the fourth quarter against the Cougars. And that was a really patient move uh, inside by Sheets, too, as a sophomore. Really patient. Van Wert with the basketball. Pratt. The all-first team WBL -er scores it from 15 feet. Aiden Pratt averages 21 a game. He hasn't had as many shots today because of Crestview's box, but he's making do here in the second half. Picks up his seventh point of the second half. And that's unstoppable. He's done that against the great teams in the Western Buckeye League all year, that move right there. Temple penetrates, and A.J. Prophet knocks it away, but the ball goes out of bounds. Crestview will maintain Possession, 50 to 39, 11-point deficit in favor of the Cougars on your Lodic Jewelry scoreboard. And neither team really close to the bonus as of right now, and so it's going to be plays like this that will help Crestview get back in at the clock stop, Dave. 
shooting two free throws, you can set your defense. Absolutely. Aiden Pratt picks up his second personal. Team's fourth. That's going to put Carson Hunter at the free throw line. A move right there by Hunter that I don't know that if that he was going to be able to score that basketball, but he draws the contact. Comes away empty on the first free throw. He's a 63% free throw shooter. Let's see what he does with the second. Makes the second on the Lee's fam famous recipe free throw line. One for two for Hunter. Cuts the lead to 10. And we'll see what kind of, again, the last six and a half minutes, what kind of chess moves are made. Will anybody change defenses? Will anybody do some things differently offensively to counteract what the other team's doing? Great point, Mark. Pratt with the three from outside. Doesn't go down. Mitch Temple with the rebound. Here come the Knights. Temple. Wheeling and dealing, coming through to the left block, goes with the left hand, misses, and the defensive rebound by Carson Smith. Van Wert patient, bringing the ball down. Crespi looking to attack. That's what you would see with a 10-point deficit with 5.50 to go in the fourth quarter. And that was a good move by Temple. Just couldn't quite get it over. And there's a steal by Crespi. Carson Hunter gets into the passing lane. He gets to 12 feet from the basket, comes up short, and again, one and done for the Knights. Luke Wessel with the ball gets it up to Carson Smith. He misses, and Gavin Etzler with the rebound. Up and down action a little bit here, Mark. Yeah, and both teams, again, we've seen this tonight about three or four times. People are struggling to finish right now. Is it legs? Is it defense? It could be all those factors. So Crestview down 10. Gavin Etzler with the look. Doesn't score it, but Mitch Temple's going to get the offensive rebound. Looking inside for Sheets, kicks it out to Hunter. And it's just a war inside right now, Dave. It's basically four round one, and it, Pratt and, and Sheets are going at it. Mitch Temple with the penetration. Inside out action to Lickley. Doesn't come up with it. And that is the shot that Crestview wanted in that possession, but Nate Lickley unable to connect, and a foul on the ensuing rebound against Crestview. And Crestview's getting frustrated right now because they've had open shots, Dave, and they just can't knock them down. They're a good three-point shooting team, and Lickley's over 50% and has struggled, and mm -hmm. he hit that first one. It's just when these kind of things happen, you start pressing a little bit, and you, and you think about it. Yeah, Lickley averages 10 points a game. He has nine right now, but only one three, as you said, Mark. Here comes the Cougars into their half-court set. They're going to be... We'll Go see ahead. what happens here, but my my guess is they're going to get the ball to Pratt. And they've got we've got sheets out of the game, and we're going to see a set right now for Pratt. Yeah, that's where I was going to go. Almost a 90% shot possession. You're looking to get something that you're going to score 90% of the time, and when you have it in Aiden Pratt's hands, those are pretty high odds. But right now, Vanderbilt's going to be real patient. Crestview looking to trap the basketball. Gunner goes down. And Coach Loddick, very wisely, is going to call a timeout. He's going to call a 30-second timeout with 4.21 to go in the fourth quarter. We'll take a timeout, too. You're watching High School Basketball with Mark Bagley and Dave Bowen on WOSN. You're watching High School Basketball Crestview, Van Wert, fourth quarter. Another trivia question. We said the series stopped after playing 10 times starting in 67, 68, Mark. When did it recommence? Well, it was the holiday tournament. I remember yes. that game. It was a great game. Holiday or tip-off classic? Tip -off, I'm yes. sorry, tip-off classic. Beginning of the year. And, I, and we were both coaching. It was a great game. And I think Crestview called a late timeout. Hey, it's a 1-3-1 here by Crestview. 1-3-1 trap. That's what they're looking to do, see if they can get a turnover. Pratt able to attack the basket and does what Aiden Pratt does, kisses it off the window. The then they get a steal. And here, Van Wert, again, going to be patient. Pratt kicks it to the left wing. Phillips brings it out. Crestview in the 1-3-1. Carson Hunter with the steal. Attacks. Behind his back over his head. Doesn't score it. And it's a loose ball. And the 50-50 ball goes to Cougars' way. Light ball turnover. And that's just a play right there where Luke Wessel said, I'm going to attack the basket. Worst case scenario, I'm going to go to the free throw line and shoot two. That's exactly what's going to happen. Nasir Easterling with the personal foul, his second, team six. I'm going to say 2005. 2005, you're real close. 06, 07, that's when the series recommenced in the tip-off classic. It was a 49-46 win for the Cougars. 
And I do remember that game because Presley hit a three late, but there was a timeout call before the three. As soon as the three went up, right before that, there was a timeout call, and that was a crucial play at the end of the game. And I think Cressy went to state that year. If I remember right. 06, 07. No, we didn't no. go that year. Back in 02, 03, we did. Um, but not in 06, 07, but would have liked to. Thanks for mentioning that. I don't remember that three. That's something I probably just put into my memory bank of uh, not remembering, if you will. Crestview with the basketball on the right side. And there's another steal for the Cougars. And Van Wert's looking to put this thing away right now. Uh, Crestview has had some uncharacteristic turnovers. A.J. Profit, two steals. And they went the knockout punch there and didn't make it. Hunter with the rebound, kicks it up to Easterling, gets the dribble in, and scores. And Crestview's going to call timeout. Nasir Easterling with the bucket. Timeout Crestview. That's a Lee's famous recipe timeout. And we'll take a timeout, too. We'll be right back after this. You're watching High School Hoops on WOSN. Thirty-second timeout for Crestview after the made shot. 3:07 remaining in the fourth quarter. Another trivia question: When did the Cougars first come back to Crestview and play in the Ray Etzler Gymnasium after the series recommenced back in 06-07? We did the tip-off classic for several years. When did the tip-off classic end? And Van Wert came to the Ray Etzler Gymnasium. Mark, I'm going to say uh, 2000. 16. You are on at the 15-16 season. Yeah. I'm going to give you credit for that. That was a Crestview win, 54-43. to Van Wert going to go long. Phillips with the basketball at the free throw line. Wisely picks it up because the clock is a friend of the Cougars right now. Aiden Pratt with the basketball and with the 54-42 to win, uh, lead. And Van Wert is in the bonus, so the next uh, foul called will be free throws, which Van Wert has not been a great free throw shooting team this year. But Crestview can't wait very long. It, it's a four-possession game right now, Dave, and they're running out of time. I agree. I think you want to put the pressure on Van Wert to make some free throws. Crestview trying to run a 1-3-1 one, one trap. They have Phillips in the trap. Here's the opportunity, and Coach Lodick is going to call a timeout because he had his player in trouble. Great timeout. It's going to be a full timeout for the Cougars. We'll take it to 231 remaining in the fourth quarter. You're watching High School Hoops Van Wert County style. Crestview Van Wert on WOSN. Van Wert High School, we're playing a little trivia action with Mark Bagley, a Van Wert alum, the superintendent of Van Wert City Schools, Dave Bowen, Crestview alum, high school principal, both former coaches on the sidelines in this series. What is, last question, what is the overall series tally between Crestview and Van Wert, including way back the first time they played when it was 5-5 five to five starting in 67? So it was 5-5, five to five. there's been 13 more games, it's 7-6 Van Wert, so we're we're 12-11. 12-11. If Crestview can make a, a you know a, a great comeback here, we'd be all tied up, which would be awesome. And for Van Wert, they're saying no. We want to be up two. Absolutely. So Crestview and Van Wert have different opinions about that, <laughs> as Dave and I probably do too. Sure. Yeah. Nice job by Van Wert working the ball, running the clock down. <laughs> Garrett Gunner or Metalark Lemon out there. He's doing a great job. Aiden Pratt with the basketball now. And this is what senior-laden teams do. Van Wert's lost a lot of close games. You know, they've lost seven games by 20 total points, Dave, and they're, they've really held their composure this game tonight. We, and we talked about that. Whoever has more poise will win, and, and throughout this game, for 30 minutes, Dave, Van Wert has had more poise. They have, and the foul right there on Gavin Etzler, his second, team seventh. So we're going to have... Luke Wessel at the free throw line. He's the second leading free throw shooter for the Cougars at 66%. And, and Van Wert's 55% as a team. Wessel puts the first one up. The left-hander nails it. He's three for five from the line. Actually, he is four for five. Four points in the game at this point in time. The second one goes up by Wessel and 
doesn't connect there. Ren Sheets with the rebound. Here comes Gavin Etzler for Crestview. They got to look for a shot early in the possession. Etzler off the window, doesn't score. Aiden Pratt with the basketball. You got to look early, but he was definitely guarded. Tough look for Gavin Etzler. That was great defense by Van Wert. Went straight up. Luke Wessel gets it to Nate Phillips. I actually think that pass was for Smith, but Phillips steps in front, and he'll take the two points. And on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard, it is 51-42, and we just had a shot there that went in. Nate Lickley hit a three, uh, trailing the break there, and, and that was a big shot, and, and Coach Essler had to call a timeout there to try to get reset here. 51-45 with 126. That's 57, Dave. Sorry. That's going to say. We're I can't, fighting the pole yes, right now. Yes, thank you. I was like, it's not that close. It's not that close. Crestview didn't go on a hard run right there. We're going to keep it right here. 57-45 on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. So your thoughts right now, Mark, overall with the game with 126 remaining. Again, we talked about it a little bit. Just the, the, the poise of Van Wert overall has been outstanding. When Crestview made that run to tie it in the third quarter, that's when Garrett Gunner kind of reestablished as the point guard the tone that Van Wert wanted to set. And I think Crestview, they got rushed a little bit and missed some uncharacteristic shots and then took some tough shots. And there were some weird plays where there was transition that Van Wert, some of the ball came to Van Wert and they laid it in. And so... They've created this, this uh, margin, and there isn't much time left. Crestview still has two timeouts, Van Wert three. Van Wert has fouls to give. They won't have 14 fouls, so they can be aggressive defensively to make Crestview reset. Great point. Van Wert with the ball out of bounds. I think Crestview has to look to foul early. They do as Carson Hunter picks up the personal foul. That's his third. Team's eight, so Van Wert is still in one in the bonus situation, and to the free throw line, Garrett Gunner, a 49% free throw shooter. So you want him to grow here as your point guard. You want him on the line, but he's got to convert. Gunner does not. Jarrett Harding with the rebound. Here comes Carson Hunter for Crestview. Lickley with the look. He's going to take it from deep. Off the glass, doesn't go. Phillips with the board. Here comes Van Wert in transition. Lickley gives up the foul. And that's one, again, that uh, he keeps the bucket from occurring, but Phillips is going to go to the free throw line now. And the mentality of players, Dave, changes when you go from one and one to two. And so now you, you kind of settle in. We all know you're shooting two free throws here and a chance for Phillips to increase this lead. Again, 50% free throw shooter. Drills the first one, does Phillips. And I think Nate Phillips' defensive intensity, he, he has done a really good job on Etzler tonight as he's guarded him. It has been a big factor, unsung hero for Van Wert. Agree with you. Aiden Pratt gets the offensive rebound, and he puts it back in for two more for him and the Cougars to extend the lead to 60 to 45, a 15-point margin on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. Pratt has a foul now occur as he's aggressive, as you said he can be. They're not going to the foul line. Pratt with the foul on sheets. It'll be Crestview basketball under, out of bounds. Van Wert will foul again if they have to to make them get set. And that does happen as Gavin Etzler tries to come from inbound or out of bounds to the corner. Phillips gets a handle on him and called for the foul. That's Nate Phillips' second, team six, Crestview basketball under out of bounds. Quick inbound pass to Lickley, doesn't go again. Pratt with the rebound. Aiden Pratt has done what Aiden Pratt does in the second half at both ends of the floor, but the supporting cast has been outstanding for the Cougars today. This is the point of the game where you don't want anything to happen, and you know, a 15 point lead, this is where you, know, you, you decide to be sub or play it out. Um, and this is where I think that you sub. Um, and, and we'll see what happens here if that plays out. Um, and I think that's what Coach Lodick is talking about on the bench right now. I think he wants to see what these free throws do and then go from there. Luke Wessel at the free throw line going to shoot the double bonus. That foul was on Nate Lickley. That's his fifth. That one spins around, uses all the real estate up there, and falls for Wessel. And the, and the master of the obvious here, Dave, is Van Wert knows they have to make free throws in tournament basketball. They're, they have to shoot better. They, they can't be 55% in the tournament to make a run. Great observation, and they can. They just got to get comfortable, and they are doing so today thus far. 
Doesn't come up with that, but there's Aiden Pratt. That's the second time a missed free throw here in the last two possessions for the Cougars. Pratt with the offensive rebound stick back. You can't allow that to happen if you're a Knight. And the turnover goes to Van Wert. Wessel with the lob. Pratt's going to score and get fouled. And the Van Wert faithful enjoying the play and feel the victory is in hand. And that's a great play. I, I think Dave, he just scored his 1,000th point as well, which is uh, uh, a great honor. Uh, it, it, and from this point, really nice honor for Aiden. Yeah. Absolutely. Congratulations to Aiden Pratt. Again, as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, a super competitor in everything that he has done for Van Wert. Football, basketball, I've watched him run track. Thousand points right there with Coach Laduck. His parents come out and give him a quick hug. Congratulations, Aiden Pratt. And a, a classy move by Van Wert here. Coach Miller, Coach Laduck, the two coaches that have coached forever at Van Wert with, with Dave Frelick and myself. Uh, going to get a sub here and, and get, get new guys in here. But I believe we're going to have Aiden shoot a free throw to go for 1,001 because it's a three-point play opportunity. The lob pass, he was able to reel it in and score it with the contact. And, and I, I'll mention this, Dave, a, a trivia question that no one probably knows, but John Bagley, who's built just like Aiden Pratt, I've said that for a long time. Agree. Scored 1,001 point in his career. And, and there's Aiden Pratt's 1,001 point. That's pretty cool. But if you're a Van Wert Cougar fan, you want to see a lot more points from him as you enter tournament play. And again, nice applause from both crowds for the accomplishment by Aiden Pratt. And what an unbelievable finish for Van Wert. The time it was tied in midway through the third, fourth, third quarter, and now to be up by, by 21 points is a uh, tribute to Van Wert. Jared Harding with the basketball to Kellen Putman. Back to Harding, down to eight seconds in this contact or contest. Harding drills the jumper from the wing, but it's going to be too little, too late. Van Wert comes away with the victory, 66 to 47 on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. We're going to take a break and come back and wrap this one up. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. We're back here at Van Wert High School, and you can see the Van Wert student section celebrating the victory with the team at midcourt. Congratulations to them. It is a rivalry game between the Cougars and the Knights, a game that, again, was close at halftime, 30-25 to 25 in favor of Van Wert. Crestview tied the game at 35 but never led. And then the fourth quarter was simply a situation where Van Wert executed, got ahead, and made Crestview play catch up. And Van Wert hit free throws to put themselves, put themselves in position to seal the victory. Mark, your thoughts. I think both teams are going to learn a lot from this game tonight, Dave. And it was a great win for Van Wert. And they got to celebrate here for a little bit and move on because they got to turn the page to tournament. They play the winner next Friday uh, at Lima Senior versus the Upper Sandusky Rams and the Elida Bulldogs. The Elida Bulldogs played them within three points, had a chance to tie it uh, last weekend. And so that's going to be a tough game for them, whoever they play. And then for the Crestview Knights, they'll, they'll dwell on this for a little bit uh, on some things. And, and you know, you watch the film briefly, but you got to move on too because they're playing in that brutal uh, Van Wert sectional to get to e Elida. We know there's five teams that are excellent, and you can't really find a pattern on who beat who this year. There's been all kind of wins and losses, and so the best team that plays uh, well for for those two weeks will will, will move on in, in advance. So I think both teams will learn a lot from this, um, and I, I think uh, for Crestview. Uh, they got to turn the page and move on and get better from that. And for Van Wert, they got to they got to use what worked well. And they got hurt tonight on the curl screens uh, uh, for for that first half and and made some adjustments and, and really finished the game strong. Yeah, Crestview tried to go with the box and one in the first half, found themselves down five as a result at halftime. They come out in their 
patented man to man in the second half, but Van Wert was able to execute against that, did a nice job. And again, you talk about tournament play. Uh, Van Wert has a great opportunity as the three seed and Crestview. It's, it's that Elida district. They're going to play sectional here at Van Wert against uh, the Lipsick Miller City winner. Hopefully come away with a victory there if you're a Crestview fan. And then you go to what I simply term as Little Mecca, the Elida Fieldhouse district action. It's going to be an outstanding uh, field of four, whoever it may be. you got to come ready to play. But again, it's one game at a time, and when you lock in, when you can really lock into one game at a time, special things can happen. And if both teams can make it to March, that's the district final game. That's really in northwest Ohio, a district final feels like a regional final. It does. It, 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 and for the, for the Van Wert, it's the Western Buckeye League Championship plus a few, um, and that has excellent teams in St. Mary's and Defiance. That would be March 1st, 4th. And Friday, March 3rd would be that, that district final in Elida. And, and uh, there's no better atmosphere than a Friday night district final in Northwest Ohio. And that place is packed. It's rocking an hour before the game. Um, it's goosebump time. It is. And, and we have both have been fortunate to be able to experience that at, at certain levels, certain certain times. And it's just, it is. It's a great atmosphere. And I can, I can sense it now, Mark. And it's so fun, too, that these kind of tournament runs that happen. And I'll never forget the last year that I coached. And Jeremy Best and I become really good friends. And we practiced together the week of our district tournaments and went to each other's games. And the amazing district final that Crestview had that beat Clyde on the miracle shot by Etzler. And then we weren't so fortunate losing in overtime to Shawnee the next night. And Jeremy came to our game. It's just that's what high school basketball is all about. When it's all said and done, we're all part of a great county community, and we support our athletes, and it's just a game when it comes down to it. I know we make it out to be more than a game, but it really is just a game, and the friendships and memories that happen from these games are what matters. Absolutely. We work real hard when we're in the mix, and then when we're out of it, we support each other. Today's game, a 66-47 to 47 victory for the Cougars. Van Wert improves to 15-7 and seven and finishes the, re finishes the regular season at that mark. Crestview finishes the regular season 19-3. and three. Mark, it was a pleasure working with you. It was my first call as a play-by-play -play announcer. I appreciated partnering, partnering with you to do it. Well, I'm glad you did that, Dave, because I've never done that, and I, I love the color aspect, but... I think for both of us, we're really excited to see what games we get put on the next several weeks. And it's really exciting. Whoever we work with are true professionals. And TV44 does such a great job of taking care of us. And more importantly, taking care of high school athletes, taking care of coaches. And it's so special, Northwest Ohio, tournament basketball time. It sure is. It's a positive promotion of our young people, our young student athletes. That's going to wrap it up here. And again, for Megan Sherrick and Kelsey Beimer and Mark Bagley, I'm Dave Bowen. Thanks for watching our game this evening. That's going to wrap it up here on WOSN. May all of your jumpers hit nothing but the bottom of the net.